<coughs> I was just about to do an intro with a hello and it came out of the <coughs> hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Uh, Tacoma Comics here. Wanted to talk to my friends out there in YouTube land and just show some books. Probably not some fascinating books. I'm going to go ahead and guess that majority of these books that I'm about to show are Kanan, um, Sabine, and Ezra and Hera related. But I wanted to do the unboxing because... I got five packages today, and usually I'm used to bubble envelopes, the USPS bubble envelopes. I'm used to, hey, Perry, I'm used to getting um, Gemini. Sometimes you get some weird stuff. I got five packages today, and all five of them were different. So I got this one guy that got, like, the inter-office envelope, guy or girl, I don't know. Um, and it feels like there's some cardboard in between. So we'll open that one and see what I got. Somebody sent me... Uh, feels like some stiff cardboard inside some Amazon packaging, bubble wrap Amazon. So that's pretty cool. Got a little bit more of a custom, um, one. They sent this media mail and, you know, I know we're not supposed to send media mail, but I'll tell you what, I went to the post office last week with a, a, a package and the lady's like, oh, what's in it? I'm like, comics. She goes, oh, we'll send that media mail. So, you know, I, it doesn't seem like the postal workers had a problem with it. And then somebody went ahead and feels like there's a Gemini in here. So this is the way that I would do it, but I'd probably squeeze into the bubble uh, ones, but that's pretty good. And then I got this. Somebody went ahead and taped a large piece of cardboard, cover the address up there, to a smaller piece of cardboard. Comic sticking out. You can see that comic book sticking out. I can't even push it back in because the tape has got it in place. It's not like I did that. So we'll uh, we'll open these. We'll see what I got, and we'll talk a little bit about packaging and shipping and delivering. Now, my my method. I'm not going to do a, a packaging video, right? Uh, how to pack your comic books. I think there's videos out there. If people are interested. If people want me to, I will. But I don't think I have to. But my basic thing is to take a Gemini and fill it with up to ten comics. And what you can do with that is either cut off the top, or I like to cut the four corners of the top, bend them over like this, and then the two long ends like that. It shortens the package just enough to put it into a mailer, um, to put it into a uh, a bubble mailer, an $8 or whatever it is, $8.60 bubble mailer, um, and that works. So this uh, this one here... Looks pretty good so far. Um, we got some uh, some uh, cut up boxes, and somebody was saying, "I'm sure the post office doesn't want you actually to take the free shipping supplies and cut it up." But you know what? Uh, either somebody did that, and I don't have a problem with it, or they're reusing, which is even better if they're reusing uh, supplies. You know, you can't fault them for that. I'm missing a piece of tape. Oh no, I see. It only unfolds one way, or Ah, so they, they folded it and taped it in such a way that you got to kind of get in there. But we got it. Okay. Not bad. It's protected. You know, if you want to go the extra step for your customers, you make it easy to take out. But at least it's protected. So let's see what the heck I got here. Tape. Holy cow. Tape, tape everywhere, tape. I'm going to have to rebag and board these for sure because the tape is obfuscating, infiltrating, and every other inappropriate adjective to describe what the tape is doing. I think this was a three comic lot, and I only wanted one of them. Um, oh, so I only got two of them. Maybe it's a two comic lot. I don't know. So. Oh, it's a three comic lot, um, and it contains something called Puma Blues, uh, and then the originals in an ash can by Dave Gibbons. Uh, I've heard of Puma Blues, and that's number one. I don't know much about it. I didn't want either of these. If they're worth something, I don't know. Uh, the reason I got it is because it was like a $3 or $1 sale on eBay, um, and the one that I wanted was this first appearance of General Grievous whom I do not like as a character and I do not care about. I'm just a Star Wars fan, so 
for like a dollar plus four dollar shipping. Patrick, my friend, what is up? I decided to get it. Just making sure. Yeah, there's, you know, not even, I wouldn't even call it a tick. There's like a little color blemish right. I mean, those aren't even ticks. Those are more like spine rubs. Um, it's not a big book. It's not an important book. I'm glad I opened it first. There's a bigger one on the back there um, because it kind of sets the stage for what's to come. Uh, yeah, definitely. These are, this guy's had this stuff here for a while. And I'm not complaining. This is exactly what I expected considering the price I paid. I can just check that off and say, okay, I got a small Star Wars key. I'm pretty happy um, <clears throat> with that. Let's take a look at these though because comics are comics and you're all comic book fans. That's not bad. At, ooh, that's that's beat up. But again, it's Puma Blues from a Aardvark International, two dollars. So probably like a nineteen ninety four comic. Um, looks like it's self published or uh, second printing. <laughs> nineteen eighty six, twenty thousand copies, second printing. So anybody knows anything about Puma Blues? I do not. But there you go. I got. Issue one, second printing. They actually put the print run inside, which is cool. And this is kind of cool because we all know Dave Gibbons from The Watchmen. And this is uh, something he did afterwards, obviously, since they referenced The Watch Watchmen. But ash cans are all pretty darn cool. And this is like a little promo for a series uh, called The Originals. It came out in October of, 19, of 2004, it seems. And I assume this is a... Uh, the original ash can edition. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to have an ash can that can print. That would be kind of rare. So pretty cool. Um, that was super cheap. So uh, I'm not worried about what was in there so much. I just wanted to get that general grievous, kind of check it off the list because you know how fanatics are with our collecting. You all know how fanatics are with our collecting. Uh, let's see. Perry, what's good? Patrick, what's good? What are you guys up to today? How are you managing during this time? Now, this is the way it goes, right? There you go. Take that. That's indestructible. That's $8. I like to do the, the bubble wrap ones. I think it's a little extra protection, but it's mainly the same thing. Um, so, yeah, pretty darn good. So far, how much tape do they put here? I usually put too much tape along this edge. I don't need to. It's a fault of mine that I tend to correct, but I always forget to correct because habits. Ooh, so whatever this is. Oh, okay. Um, man, I can't remember the guy's name on Instagram, but he had some super cheap sales. Uh, pretty... Pretty, uh, pretty good prices, so nothing spectacular, but run fillers for sure. I got this Hawkeye, which I couldn't remember if I had, but uh, for three bucks, um, I, I was able to, to grab a Hawkeye that I don't think I have. I think I, I don't think I have 21. Um, I definitely didn't have Hawkeye 3. I've got 1, 2, 5, and then like 5 through 19 or something. So it's pretty excited to get that. And these are just, I love this, the ah, David Aha covers here. Um, I don't know if something happened in this story. I haven't read the whole story that made them switch from one color scheme to another. But there's a pretty drastic switch um, in the color scheme. So it's pretty cool. Hey, Patrick, I'm actually not allowed to go to my school. Neither is my wife. Like Washington, it, we're on... You cannot go into school, even if you wanted to. I've had several of these. I love the series. I've got another one. I don't know why I bought it. I'm supposed to stop buying multiples, um, especially if they're just to sell. But I sometimes can't help myself. I have a problem. Help me. Don't help me. I like my problem. Uh, and the last one here. Oh, this one I was actually pretty excited about to get another Little Bird number one for five bucks. So. Pretty pretty excited with that. That was pretty good. A total of sixteen um sixteen dollars for two run fillers and two number ones that I like that I want. Um, yeah, it is Perry. It it is tough. Um, you know, my well, I don't want to get too deep into it. One son is is doing something other than schooling now. He's in a, a special program, getting some help. Um, the other son, we're kind of like free schooling it. You know, what would you like to do today? Here's some suggestions. Uh, my wife teaches in Tacoma where my son goes to school, and they were instructed to just 
give um, keep in contact with the kids and give them learning opportunities or learning things to do. You know, I, I've said this before. My school is kind of different because I have um, because I have uh, a one to one iPad thing. So all the kids were told to grab their iPads before they went home, and all the kids, you know, have iPads. So I'm actually doing instruction. I'm not supposed to grade it because of equity issues, not supposed to require it. When we do come back, whether that's in May or June or September, we can't hold them accountable for any of the work that we've given out, but I am supposed to conduct class as normally as possible. And so my school decided that CTE, which is includes robotics, would go on Fridays. So I didn't teach all week until Friday, and I just did a check-in with my students. How are you doing? What's going on? Here's some resources if you need help. Here's how to contact me if you want some extra help. Here's an assignment. It's basically tell me what do I need to know about you in this time to help you out. And that was it. This week we're on spring break, so we're not doing any of that. And then I'll meet them the next week, and I actually will try to do some STEM work and some uh, some online stuff. I just don't want to overdo it. And you know, a lot of these kids, their parents are out of work, and they're, they don't know how they're going to get food or rent, and they could give a damn about school, and I don't blame them. Let's see what was in this package. Ooh, the second printing. Second printing has the black background. First printing has the red, the blue background. Um, you all, if you followed me at all, you know that I'm specking on this. Um, my speculation is that we will see Sabine in Mandalorian season two. I, I tend to think, and this is kind of like my wild guess, that she is the armor and weapons maker. Um, I have nothing to prove that by but that is just a nice copy there's one it's not even a tick it's just a, a crease um not color breaking at all and the front is perfect uh i tend to think we're going to see her we might see ezra kane in her hair i don't know um so this is you tell me if this is a first appearance of cameo right they do speak uh sabine has a speaking part right here kanan does i think Hera does Zeb does, Ezra does, but this is like a flashback scene. After this, we don't see any of these characters except Kanan until um, all the way until issue six, where they actually take place in the story. So, uh, yes, yeah, Sabine, hey, not every mission can be about rebels fighting the Empire. What's the gig this time? And she speaks, but I still consider it a cameo. Um, I, I don't know if. If it, it technically is the first appearance, I still want to say the first appearance is issue six, right? This is the next page. Now we're actually, Kanan is flashing back, and the next five issues are all about that. At the end of issue five is a preview for issue six, where you see the characters again, kind of like you saw them here. And then um, issue six actually includes the characters in the storyline. So I'm going to go ahead and say that issue one is cameo, in my opinion. Um but I don't know. I've been picking these up for cheap. I've got a bunch of them now, different printings, different um, variants. I have no idea. Um, I wouldn't go out and spend 20 bucks on them. I wouldn't even spend 10 or more than 10. Um, but if you can still find them for three, four, five, maybe even six, I'd go and pick them up as if, if you want to speculate, right? I like to flip books, find a cheap book in the wild that I know is worth more. But speculation means you find a cheap book in the wild that you think will be worth more somewhere down the line. And I don't do that too often, but I, I did that with this only because I saw the um, the Soka craziness last week and because I love these characters. So if I am burdened with extra Star Wars books, I'm not flipping out like, oh my gosh, I've got extra Star Wars books. What am I going to do? I'm going to be like, hey, I got extra Star Wars books. Check out my Kanan, The Last Padawan collection. And by the way, that's a great, great story. If you want to read a great story, holy fuck nuts. <laughs> Excuse me. If you want to read a great story, um, <laughs> go ahead and Kanan, The Last Padawan. Pick up the trade. It's really good. I don't know. <laughs> Do these go together at all? <laughs> that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i just lost a viewer because i cursed maybe i don't know so the media mail package here was inside the amazon package was inside the two um and i don't know man 
the label on this has nothing to do with the label on the outside. So all sorts of craziness and can't get at this tab because it's taped down. You don't need to put tape on it if it has a sticky tab. Let's see what comics I got because I'm kind of, yeah, sorry if you uh, are tired of me just talking about Sabine. Oh, no, look at this one. This is the one. This is the one. I got this as soon as the rush hit, I went and, and or as soon as the news hit, I went and got this. Um, and I got it before the prices went crazy. I snagged this um, pretty cheap compared to where they are now. And this is flawless. Um, well, if it's not flawless, it's a, it's a nine, six. I mean, I don't know, you guys tell me, is there somewhere around there, there's a tiny crease and I don't know. My glasses back on. Yeah. So most of that can be pressed out. A tiny bit of that is breaking color. I mean, I still think this book gets a 9.6. Um, I'm still super excited. This is my second copy. I'm going to compare the two, decide which one I want to keep more, and which one I should, I could sell, which one I should sell. and. Uh, We'll go it from there, um, and we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, but I am super excited about that. Okay. This is literally two pieces of cardboard with a, a comic sandwich in between. Um, even now, here's an interesting question for the chat, for the two people in the chat. If you get a comic book like this, and it turns out in good shape, do you ding the person on eBay or do you let it go? I'm inclined to say shipping was like crap and I got lucky. I don't know. But here is the Star Wars Rebels variant of Kanan, the last Padawan, number one. Get that glare out of there. Um, this one is in pretty good condition, too. Do people still tape their bags, man? I get resealable bags or I just take the tape off. I never tape a comic book bag because I had that unfortunate incident with shoe number one a while ago. So there's two dings there. It's almost like a third staple. The way it's just two white dots, not even like a color breaking crease. That is incredibly cool. Um, very happy to have that. Hope this book takes off at some point, or hope uh, the characters. I mean, uh, if I love Rebels, if you're not haven't watched Rebels, man, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm watching, rewatching season three right now. Um, there's an episode of season three that's phenomenal where Maul and um, Kenobi, Obi Wan Kenobi fight, but the whole the whole series is really really good. I, I very much dig um, Star Wars Rebels. Uh, it's getting pretty deep and pretty much into Star Wars law lore. And if you're a geek like me, it is definitely worth giving a watch. All right, let's just uh, go through those again. Let me see if I can put these into some sort of order. Oh, it's a pretty simple order to put them in. We have books I didn't want in <laughs> column A, but still pretty darn cool. I like that. I don't have many ash cans. Don't know anything about Puma Blues. Don't know anything about Puma Blues, second printing of number one. Uh, 
really excited to see if I can get the price sticker off. Otherwise, I'll have to rebag this, which annoys me. Which annoys me, you say? Yeah. I don't know about that. Um, number three, which is really cool because I do not have that in this series. Number 21, I think I do not have that in this series. Motor Girl. Number one, very, very cool book. I've got two of these. I might be down to one, so it's nice to have another one. Little Bird, definitely a great book. Really thick, heavy book, too. And then I got the uh, Star Wars books that I ordered. And uh, first General Grievous. First cameo or appearance, depending on what you think of Sabine, Ezra, Kanan, Hera, and Zeb. Second printing. Same book, Star Wars Rebels variant, and that is the fourth variant, so that should be a, a lower print run. And then my baby, my first appearance of Ahsoka. Da, 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 da. Funny thing is, this one cost me a lot. The last one cost me 25 when I bought it a year ago. So, you know, talk about books taking off. And right now, um, I can easily make my money back on that Clone Wars. Uh, so pretty happy about that. Uh, that's all I got to say, man. Thanks for sticking with me. A few people up this time of the day, out and about, doing their comic book thing. Uh, if you guys are going live or got any shows coming up, put it in the chat so I can watch you later. Otherwise, I'm going to take the last sip of my coffee. And my uh, my son and I have some uh, yard work to do. So thanks for sticking with me, and I'll catch you guys later. Tacoma Comics saying goodbye.